Let's get in a sense of the IIP numbers in further detail. Ila Patnayak, professor at NIPFP, now joins in live on the show. Um, if you could just walk us through what you make of the 2.4% IIP number, it is comparatively better than the 0.1% that we saw last month. But do you think that this number is reflective of the overall mood in the economy? So I first of all don't think that we should start looking at monthly numbers uh, which are actually coming in with a 12 month lag because we, we are looking at year on year numbers. So I th the bottom line is that GDP growth has slowed down and whether we were at 0.1 or whether we are at 2.4, we are certainly not at 10 percent and uh, we should not be thinking and getting optimistic about 2.4. There's a serious problem with growth and uh, it is not a problem that interest rates are going to solve. So that's the question before us that instead of jumping up and down about every single 0.1% change in the IIP monthly year on year data, uh, the focus should be on what is the uh, growth problem, what is the situation, GDP growth has clearly come down, what is the outlook like for this year, what is investment looking like and what we think needs to be done for that. So Atila, do you think is the outlook then for this year, are we likely to see a recovery but perhaps only in the second half? I don't know that we, we are likely to see a recovery unless economic policies change. I, I don't know that uh, we are clearly doing some anything right. So unless investment picks up, uh, the uh, investment climate picks up, government changes policies, and I don't just mean FDI and retail sort of policies. I mean the overall policy environment where projects get clearances, a lot of projects that are stuck get cleared, where investment sentiment improves, where inflation becomes low and stable instead of the kind of inflation we have. I don't think that with the high rising a volatile consumer price index, you can get better growth. So I'm not very optimistic that next uh, quarter or two quarters later, none of the investment data that I'm looking at is showing me that, we, uh, that business is bouncing back in, or that infrastructure investment has improved or that the government is now doing better in terms of handing out projects. And those are the foundations for higher growth uh, in the coming quarters. Sure, Ila, speaking of inflation, that's the next uh, macroeconomic data which will be unveiled on Monday. There have been the structural problems as well as the volatility in the rupee against the dollar. That's certainly going to add to the external pressures and weigh down on inflation, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, with the rupee depreciating, the price of tradables also goes up, whereas uh, until now, the big, big problem that we've been having for the last five, six years is that the price of non-tradables has been going up and consumer price indices have been rising faster than the price of tradables because, you know, the world situation is that uh, uh, demand is uh, down and so tradable prices that are determined by either import parity prices or things that we actually import may not have risen as fast but with the rupee depreciating both will be rising so non tradables already with the mess we have on monetary policy and uh, you know the, even today the lack of commitment to focus on inflation they have been rising in addition if tradable prices also start pushing up they're also going to push uh, the um, price indices up and uh, m my worry is that uh, even today people are not adequately uh, focused on the issue that for long term growth you need a low and stable inflation rate. No country has had a high, uncertain, volatile inflation and got growth. So instead of seeing it as a trade-off, what we do need to see is that it, a low inflation regime complements the environment for growth. It improves the environment for growth. So I'm worried that uh, whatever happens to the rupee, and it's not whatever happens to the rupee, but what's happening overall, the large fiscal deficit, with, which is partly responsible for what is happening to the rupee, but that the overall situation is one where we are just not adequately focused on how we are managing the demand situation and how we are managing inflation.